when the Russians were, had enslaved some of the Slavic uh, nations. And so to use that term, uh, you must recognize only its connotation, not its, def not its denotation. But Moors were held to force servitude. But you must recognize also in North America that both Moors and Christians had, had, forced, had slaves, what you call slaves. That part of the history is not usually spoken of because of the usurpation. Are we clear? Now, um, one of the, one of the uh, things, because you've got to remember a couple of administrations before George Washington in the Arthur St. Clair administration is when the treaty, which I just read of, was formulated. This solidified the powers for the establishment of the United States as a political body, because you've got to remember many of the Moorish regents did not want the United States established for fear that there were traitors amongst the, the Europeans who were agreeing to this union, which of course eventually happened. Uh, uh, so those premonitions came true. However, there's also the karmic debt for Moors having held many Christians to servitude prior to this. So it's important for people to know the world history in order to understand what we must do to solve the problems today. Because by when the, when the, um, the European side of the juristic agreement began to process of overthrowing the republic, they took on, uh, by virtue of that theft, much of the negative part of the forced servitude that actually is attributed to the Moors. Do, do we understand? It's sort of like if you steal somebody's car and somebody stops you and, and you've got a bunch of camel humps in the back of your car and that's, you know, you're not supposed to have camel humps in the back of your car, they're yours. Do you get the point? So what happens is a lot of the negative um, human uh, history and negative destruction of, of human rights that, um, that were attributed to both sides, both the Moors and the Christians, now most of the Christians have that burden on them by virtue of having stolen the birthright, meaning that they didn't do it all. Uh, do we see? So concepts on how to look at this must be very cleared up because there's guilt on both sides. However, um, what you have today, the problem that you have today that now that they had overthrown the Republican form of government in order to enslave the Moors and brand them Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, and Indians, and West Indians, whatever they've been calling them this week, they lost their birthright. Are we clear? Are you clear? Because the covenant, the covenant, or the contract, is valid with those who uphold it, meaning that the parties to the contract, in order to call it into force, must honor it. You see, so one side is honoring it and steps outside and, and brings in or covers with another body of law or foreign, a foreign jurisdiction and brings it in but still maintains a seat. You have the fraud that you have today. This is really where the issue is before the people now that they're complaining about and they've lost, i.e., their republic. For instance, like you see a lot of people arguing, you know, how can they maintain their sovereignty? How, they can, how can they secure their sovereignty or how can they live within the contract? The deal of it is, is that they're trying to live inside of a sovereign protected or protective contract that those who are in the seats of government know exists, but they, the common people, don't know that they're the enemies to it. They believe these people, but they don't know that they are actually the enemies to it. Do you understand? And they're appealing to them to uphold a principle that they are the enemies to. And these people have them looking at other governments that they've subverted or set up puppets in around the world with their artificial counterfeit financing and have pit them against the common people here in North America as enemies when they're actually agents of the people who are running the government here. So you see, the conflict is really not what people think they're looking at. Are, are you very clear? As an example, to make it very clear, Cuba, is, which is Isabella, as an example, um, the Demos had established um, a playground there in, in Isabella, whereas they had whorehouses with um, 
little girls, 12, 13 years old, and they had casinos where all the preachers and the politicians went and they did their dirt because it was just 90 miles off of um, the land of flowers that we call Florida. It's called the land of flowers. Um, and they did their dirt there and they came back here and played their self-righteous game. Are we clear? It got so ugly and dirty that women with broomsticks and men, farmers with ordinary farm tools were out fighting the United States. Not United States because they were not United States Republic. They were U.S. There's two different entities. U.S. soldiers in the street who were shooting them down, mowing them down in the street because they want to protect their little girls. Do you understand? It had got that bad. They were murdering people in the street and they were worried about how the rest of the civilized world saw this. And their uh, point man was named Batista. This was their, this was their uh, despot that they instilled in Isabella, just as many of the um, so-called leaders around these, um, they have a favorite word of calling the banana republics, means slave republics, you know, where they have plantations. But they would charge the people with the leadership that actually the U.S. corporations installed. It got so bad, they were murdering women in the street. So in order to protect their image, they wanted to get Batista out and then um, install another puppet in order to make the people think, you know, to keep the natives from being restless. So they trained uh, an agent that they had trained in Texas to take Batista's place uh, in order to continue what they were doing but looked like they were doing something for the people. And that agent who was trained in Texas is named Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, after they instilled Fidel Castro and took their other point man out, uh, did not hold up the bargain. He nationalized Isabella and gave the land back to the people that uh, the, the U.S. corporations had stolen it from and was given the sovereignty back to the people. And uh, they closed the little whorehouses of the little that they had of these little girls and they closed most of the casinos and the gambling houses that the politicians and the preachers came from North America to do their dirt. All right? So they didn't like him too much. So they um, tried, they bombed, they murdered thousands of people, and they invaded more than what they say in the public. <clears throat> Those two invasions that they made, they were ones that went public. Um, so that's the real origin as to why they don't like Castro. And they say, well, uh, he's communist and they don't like him, or he was trying to threaten the Western Hemisphere. They tell you everything, but the real reason is because he was set up by them to take the place of their other despot, and he nationalized instead of playing the game. So that's an example. Same thing happened here in North America with the Constitution. The absolute same thing. So you must look at it the absolute the same way. So what you look at, what they tell you, and what's going on in the real world is two different things. So what you have is a body of criminals pretending to be United States. They, in other words, they're using the power of the Constitution to execute private law or alien law, meaning they, they, they take an oath on the Constitution to uphold that covenant, that agreement. And then they get the seat. And then they throw the Constitution out the window. And then they bring in the traitors. And this is what has happened. And all of those bank houses can be traced back to London. Do you understand? Which includes the Federal Reserve. So when the people, what happens now for, for so many generations where they have pit people against each other, and particularly here in North America where they created the artificiality of white people, black people, green people, and orange people, all these artificial fictions, was to cover up the fact of the national name. See, because when you use the national name, then you go back to the birthright because the, the, the birthright is in the national name because that relates to the law or the sovereignty. For instance, like as an example, if a, if a man comes here from France, his sovereignty is in France, 
and his sovereignty is re recognized by the international community in the French Constitution. If a man comes here from Brazil, his sovereignty is in Brazil, secured by the Constitution of Brazil, recognized by the international community. Are we clear? If a man comes from Russia, his sovereignty is in the national principle of Russia and in the Constitution of Russia, recognized by the international community. Now, the international community, as a collective body, knowing that all laws that govern the nations on the planet have foundation in Hammurabi Bay principles of law. All of the organized governments on the planet in their constitutional principles can be traced back to Hammurabi's law. Even the way they regulate finances. Are we clear? So when you understand that, understand why international governments can come together in common law and commonly agree on universal principles of governance, irregardless of their forms of government, i.e. whether they're democracies, as they say. But most of the governments on the planet are republics, believe it. When they tell you these democracies, they're lying. 90% of your governments on this planet are republics. They may not honor the republic, but they are republics. And so when you deal with the common law, the common law is not something that a group of guys got together and made up. They're ancient. And as Grand Sheik Nature has said earlier, the common law and common sense are synonymous. It is not contrary to your natural spirit. If law is given to you and it contradicts your natural spirit, more than likely it's colored. So examine it. Are we clear? Now, I want to mention um, one more thing. Now, I want to mention this also. Now, there's really roughly around 33 different types of contract. But mostly, you're going to deal with, um, we can deal with that later. We can't do that all here. But I want you to pay attention to that principle so that all of you, most of you scholars, and, 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 and uh, already have your law books. But research the forms of contract. And remember this whenever you sign anything, particularly due to the fact that, that, the, that the United States Republic is under the false jurisdiction of the U.S. democracy, that you're going to have to protect yourself because the persons that you're going to deal with are demos. They are not real or true adherents to the Constitution for the United States. So to assume that these people are honorable would be foolish on your part. Whether they smile at you or not is irrelevant. Whether they say have a nice day or not is irrelevant. They're comfortable with you because they know that most of you are ignorant. And so it's sort of like they steal from you with calm arrogance, with a happy face. Because they're operating now, all your bank systems are operating really on a 10-point system of the Uniform Commercial Codes. Those points, which I will not go into today, but I'll let you know there are 10 points. You can do some research and find out what they are. Whenever you sign anything with them, always sign all rights reserved, UCC, that's Uniform Commercial Codes, that's abbreviated acronym, 1-207, 1-103. And I will tell you essentially that it preserves your rights as they are, but I'm going to put it another way that is not said usually by most people that will inform you of that. It is because the U.S. democracy organization has taken you out of the United States Republic and put you in a foreign jurisdiction. Foreign does not mean distant. Foreign means alien to truth. 
or alien to du jour. Are we clear? So when you think foreign, don't think distance. If you have a piece of dirt in your eye, isn't it a foreign object? Hmm? Well, the laws that are governing on this land are foreign law, which is why we have the problems that we have, which is why we have the deficit. Remember, prior to the demos taking over, the people had no debt, none. When the demos took over, the debt accelerated and accelerated and accelerated and accelerated, and now they're claiming, see, the US democracy is really bankrupt. But they're claiming that the United States Republic is bankrupt. It's a lie. In other words, a fake corporation, a body of corporations, for their own benefit, created a layer government over top of the United States Republic by using a claim to the Constitution to get those seats of power, and then did dirt around the world, even in the names of the peoples, created wars and did a lot of dirty stuff and then blame it on the people. In other words, they did their dirt in the name of the United States Republic, but they themselves are the US democracy. In other words, they're imposters. Are we very clear? Most of the people you want to deal with in your contracts are these imposters. Don't assume that they have anything whatsoever to do with the United States Republic Constitution. What occurs is when people talk about preserving your rights with these foreigners, they keep talking about, well, you know, the government in 1933 with the War Powers Act suspended the Constitution. They are not the government. That's just like that's just like somebody coming in this building from Sears and Robot, and and somebody has a gun at the door, and they come here and take everybody's jewelry and they start making laws. And then they take the seat. And so everybody starts giving them a claim of authority just because they're in the seat. And see, a few generations later, people get used to seeing them and they keep calling them the government. They are not the government. The United States Republic government has been put on hold. It's on reserve. I mean, it's asleep, literally. So the things that are going on in North America today is not the United States Republic. It's the U.S. democracy corporations, foreigners, traitors, thieves, pirates, who brought law of the seas onto the land. Everything they deal with is on the principle of booty and prize. But when you give them the honor of government, you're looking at them wrong. Respect them not with the respect of honor, but with the respect that you would give any thief that walks up the street with a gun. You respect them because they're, they're sticking you up. That's, it's, because you've got to feed your family, and you've got to go to work, and you've got to travel up and down the street, and so the highwaymen will accost you. The thieves will accost you. But know who you're dealing with. And so the protocols that will be used would be reasonable to go back to the principles of the Constitution. And you will recognize immediately they will get angry. They will get objective with you. They will be, be repulsive with you because that's not who they are. So understand that. So when you see pop, uh, politicians doing things and you see people saying, wow, the politicians are doing what they want to do. No, they're doing what they've always done. They're doing, they're carrying out their agenda. They're aliens. Do you understand? It's not. Question, the Uniform Commercial Code, is that an international uh, st um, st uh, instrument that can be used in other country, uh, countries, continents? The Uniform Commercial Pro Codes in their principle are basically uniform across the world. They're really, tra they're really principles of contract. They're actually principles of contract. Now, just like 
um, you may choose to contract or not contract and preserve certain rights or establish certain nuances in the contract relative to dealing with the offer, the consideration, or you know the ceiling or the acceptance, etc. Uh, you'd have different qualifications in the contract. The contract may be linear, implied, whatever it may be. Um, then you would qualify by whatever codes are necessary. But essentially, it's dealing with contracts, commercial trade, international. international. And they're ancient. Those principles are ancient. So, they're, so while they're talking about the uniform commercial codes, don't look at them as some modern construct. They're actually ancient principles. The deal is what they've done, and that has been the negative, because the demos have uh, wanted to maintain forced servitude in the Northwest Territories, they subverted the, cost, the, the uh, Republican form of government and therefore uh, created uh, the artificial person or the corporate person, which is the Negro entity, which is a fiction with the 14th, 15th Amendment in order to pretend that they had freed the Moors. Now remember uh, when uh, uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, which people uh, often give a, a, a credit a, a, an accreditation to Congress, et cetera, or proper legislation is actually a, a field marshal edict. It's a war edict. And it's actually a transfer of the slaves or people held to for servitude to the Congress, who then turned around and franchised the bond of those such persons in birth certificates, marriages, et cetera, et cetera. This is why, this is where the Christian Black Coast plays such a large part in, in, in U.S. corporate history, uh, in governing uh, women, the offspring, why they took the children from the women, because the principle of uh, true re of the true republic and the prior uh, Moorish government is matriarchal. Are we clear? And so they uh, uh, established the codes in order to steal the children and then put bonds on the children, what the birth certificate was, which is why they took the children from you. To, uh, took them into the government uh, service, etc., and then put bonds on them, and then put the liens against them uh, that would be otherwise to government. And so the people thought they were freed, i.e., or manumitted, and then the European slave-holding families, uh, they got the burden off of them, you know, of, of worrying about crops being burned, slaves running away, and the usual problems they were having that William Lynch talked about. So what was happening in the 14th, 15th Amendment is a fraud and a farce. So what it did, it created the artificial person or the corporate person and then transferred the birthright of the Moors into that corporate person and that's where the Negro brand comes from. So the, the brand or the, or the debt is actually on the Negro. Are we clear? This is why it's important for the U.S. democracy not to allow such persons any what you call true authority in government which is why when persons like Jesse Jackson or others run for president, it will never happen. They cannot allow such persons to be president of these United States because it's an artificial entity. So, so someone who's designated as Negro or black, which is fictions, can't be president for the United States of America. Now, do you understand why he can't get elected? Huh? Do you understand why um, in Florida, and it's not the first time, why such persons' votes can be torn up for the election to go however they want to, because they're really artificial entities. That's not really a violation of law. It's a violation of moral conscience. It's a violation of ethics. But the people don't know that they're not Negroes, Blacks, and Colors. They think that that's an identity.